This is Rachel with SingleMommyThing.com and today I'm going to talk to you about Our Family Wizard. And Our Family Wizard is essentially co-parenting software. It takes all the logistics of co-parenting and keeps them all in one organized place. Um, and it also keeps them in a manner that if you had to, for whatever reason, return to court for any issue, um, all of the records are kept somewhat officially. Um, lots of courts will take printed up records of communications from our family wizard. So it's essentially co-parenting uh, software that manages schedule, messaging, um, and the expense exchange of shared expenses that are above and beyond child support. You can also manage your child support through here. Um, but at any rate, what I love about it is that it's taken a lot of the email and text sort of communication, AKA sometimes bickering, and it's put it into one central place. So it's almost like, you know, you don't want to be bothered with your work emails when you're on vacation. This is the same sort of a thing. You're not somewhere sitting with your child or at work uh, getting texts about things and emails about things that now they're all kept inside of this uh, portal. So I love that. The other thing that I love about it is that, you know, as a mom, you're already juggling. I'm already juggling a million things. The last thing I want to have to do is be the family administrative assistant. And that is making sure that I've repeatedly emailed my son's father about some schedule issue or expense issue, you know, and having to confirm that he received it and all this other sort of like really administrative crap. Um, since it's now entered all inside of our family wizard and if he logs in, he sees what's going on. I don't need to send any duplicate messages or anything because again, all of the administrative stuff is inside. So I really think that this software, this portal frees you up to be happier co-parents. Um, it's so well worth it. So, you know, you can look here and see um, the pricing and plans. And one thing I do want to mention is that they have they have a scholarship program, both for uh, people for whom this might be too expensive, but also a military family discount. So I would argue that even if you feel like you can't afford it, you at least need to reach out. You'll see here, if you go to the Getting Started scholarship program, you can download an application, fill it out, send it in, and they're pretty fast about getting back to you. Um, okay, so let's talk pricing and plans and how you sign up. There's essentially a $99 plan and um, that is gives you a year of a subscription. Um, you start out at one gig of storage and then you know you could add something like tone meter which we'll talk about when we get into it for an extra ten dollars or you could just do bundled packages which is my preference because once you start using this i'm going to tell you you're going to find that you will rely on it more and more because it just saves you so much time and hassle so i would do the two-year subscription for two reasons you save uh, about thirty dollars for doing a two-year subscription you get automatic tone meter, you get more storage space. And the reason why it's it's a no risk sort of a setup is if after 30 days you don't love it, you're not using it, they have a money back guarantee. And I've communicated with them and they're really good about this. So just a heads up. So you would essentially go here to see the packages, but then you can go here to sign up. You're going to pick a family subscription. So with your uh, Our Family Wizard subscription, you, if you're start starting the entire family account, you will select no here because the other co-parent doesn't yet have an account. If they do have an account, then you're going to select yes. So you're gonna select no, you fill out all of this information. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to do it here, but basically, it's broken down into steps, enter it in, pick your package, enter your payment, and you are good to go. So let's go ahead and log in so I can show you what it looks like. 
um, from the other side. So when you log in, this is your dashboard, all right? And you're going to see uh, messages, events, expenses, anything that you are being notified for right up front. All right, now actually before you see the dashboard, you would be prompted to set up this under my account. And I would advise that you go through and you know at least go through here and understand uh, what you might wanna set up. But what I find is the most important thing that you wanna set up is both the notifications. You'll see that you can edit that here. You can have your phone number so you can get a text. And I prefer to do an on action. So meaning if my son's father comes in, sends a message, a request for a trade swap, um, enters in some response to an expense, I get notified, <coughs> excuse me, on action via email. So in order to make sure that you receive the notification, you are going to want to make sure that you have your profile filled out. And the two most important fields for you to fill out, uh, because if you remember under the notifications, you could choose email or text. The two most important fields are email and text. If they don't have contact information for you that's accurate, they're not gonna be able to notify you. And the beauty of the notification is, what I do is I schedule my login times. So I keep, unless there's some sort of an emergency or something that needs to be addressed, I pretty much log in on Wednesdays and Sundays and deal with any schedule things that are coming up, any new expenses, things like that. I take about 10 minutes every Wednesday night and 10 minutes every Sunday night to come in and log in. So if my son's dad is going to make a request ver via our family wizard, I won't know about it until I log in unless I'm notified, which I have it set up to notify me um, in here in the notifications. So that's just a heads up. First thing when you come in, you're going to want to select my account and make sure you have that set up in a way that works for you. Okay, so this is our home. And I really wanna talk about the two, uh, well, two and a half, but the two things I really love most about our family wizard that I think rock. They're awesome because it takes work off of my plate. You know, like I said, if you do a two-year subscription, you're looking at savings, you know, $30 over the annual. It's essentially $8 and change. And I'm not kidding you, it saves me easily an hour to two hours a week of just administrative bull crap. So the calendar is one of my favorites. Now this is um, a dummy account. I set this up because this doesn't have our personal information inside of here. I didn't want to have to block everything out and I wanted to go ahead and set things up. So if you click on the calendar tab, you have all these sort of options up top. You know, a new event, a journal, reports, trade requests, which we'll go over, um, reports for that, and then how you can view the calendar. So we're going to go over here on the left-hand column, and we're going to set up, and you'll notice just quickly that it's color-coded. So I'm like this fuchsia, um, my son's dad is green, and then also you can uh, see your child's down here. Um, you can set up multiple children. Uh, we only have our son, so we just uh, have one child set up. So if you go to the parenting schedule, you're going to see that I have these three parenting schedules set up. When you open your account, it's going to default and set you up a two week sort of repeat cycle um, schedule there. And then I've made these other two, but let me show you what that looks like. I like looking at things because um, I'm a bit of a planner. I like looking at things, big picture view, and then deep diving for the nitty gritty. So I am actually, what I'm gonna do is show you, I'm gonna delete the schedules that we have set up, and then we're gonna go ahead and set those up together so you can see how that works. It's super easy and awesome. Okay, let's see. So you'll see now, all we have is my time here, which is the default that was set up. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set up a summer schedule. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do new schedule and I'm gonna do summer schedule and I put my name so that I know that I've made this schedule and I'm gonna do a two week interval. It's going to start on um, 6-4, so June 4th, first day of summer. And it's going to end when school starts. So if we go over here for this end date and we're gonna set it for September 10th when school starts back up, okay? And a two week interval, so this basically means this is the pattern that plays out over two weeks. I'm starting it on June 4th and I'm stopping this particular pattern on September 10th just as an example. You could do it a year out, you could do it a month out, you could do whatever you want. I don't want it, I've selected two weeks because our pattern changes over two weeks. So I wanna just let this repeat. So this two week pattern is going to repeat for these essentially three months. So you'll notice here, you can adjust the, the time that you might do your exchange. I'm gonna leave three o'clock. And we'll do this as my day, my day, my day. And then we'll say over the summer, he goes with his dad for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, comes back with me Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then goes back with his dad. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll alternate. So we'll do, goes here, we do three days, and then we'll do me for a weekend. Okay, so let's say this is our summer pattern. All right, we're gonna save it. So now you'll see it's color coded on the month view. You're gonna go out to a year and I, you didn't have to, I didn't have to go in and manually enter this in. I just did a two week pattern cause that's the smallest chunk of time. And then I played it out over several months. Now let's also enter in, you know, Ryan's summer vacation. So vacation with dad. And again, I'm gonna put Rachel so that I know it was me and he's going to do a week with his dad and he's going to do that the last week of June. So we're going to start at the 25th and it ends, actually it's going to go to Monday the 2nd. Um, it's one week and it's all with his dad. And you'll see, oops, you'll see that this will override um, the other schedule that I have set up. Okay, so here we go and we can see in our month view right here, but if we go to the year, bam, there it is, vacation. Okay, so I cannot tell you how much I love this because, you know, when there are parties that are coming up or events or any sleepovers, things like that, before I make commitments, I always look in the schedule. And then if I look in the schedule and let's say, you know, like I'm looking here and I see July 2nd, 3rd and 4th, um, he's with his dad, but we are going to do an out of town family picnic with my side of the family. So I'm going to do a trade swap. All right, I'm going to request through our family wizard, switching time with my um, my son's father. So I want to switch time for, okay, want to do it. Actually, we're going to leave on Friday the 29th and we're going to come back on the 5th. All right. So this offer will expire if not responded to before. All right, now you can make this any date you want, and this is really up to you. Um, for example, my son's dad is famously non-responsive, and then in the last minute, he'll just pretend he never received anything. So I'm going to make this, rather than wait all the way up until we're about to leave and give him all that time to basically not respond and then this offer expires, it doesn't become active, it doesn't automatically make the swap happen, it just basically expires, like it's gone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to give him 48 hours and then um, 
I am going to have it expire, all right? So I'm gonna submit the request. So now you'll see it's shown up here with this gray area. And what happens is, if your other parent has an account and they've set it up properly to be notified, they're gonna get an email. So my dad, uh, my son's dad is going to get an email saying, I've requested this time. Now, if he ignores it, it's going to expire. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send out another one and I'm gonna gently nudge. Now, you know, this really um, depends on the level of conflict, but if this is a really important thing, like a wedding, you know, I set one up over here, um, I would like to take, um, nope, wait a minute, Jason's wedding. Jason's wedding out of town, Ryan is ring bearer. So this is important. And if I really want my son to go, I would need, you know, notice because if I've sent several messages, several trade requests that have gone unresponded to, which you can see here, um, I'm going to generate a report and you'll see was not answered by deadline. It just went unresponded to. So you're going to have a list of these. You've sent multiple messages and let's just say this is a super important family thing. If I need to, um, I will say, hey, I need a response. I really want to switch with you. I've given you enough notice through our family wizard, which we'll go through the messages quickly. Um, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to be forced to return to court and ask the judge's permission to do the swap. So, you know, I don't like to do that and I don't usually do that. But if it is a big event and I met with nothing but stonewalling, um, you have the ability to all this stuff is tracked here you don't have to go back in your email box pull up all the emails and then the other person says they didn't receive it no if the person has an account and they've opened it it's their problem whether or not they're logging in so for high conflict relationships non-communicative relationships co-parenting relationships this can be super helpful for those parents that get along better, this is still super helpful because it organizes everything, okay? So you can just print it directly from here. You'll see it's just going to download a PDF and then bam, print it off and you've got the record, okay? So I love the calendar. Again, we just entered a trade swap, uh, trade swap request and then to see those, we go here and we run a, a report. So, you know, the message board, I love it. It's a message board. Um, we were using another service previously, and now we're using this. Um, what I love about communicating through um, a portal that is dedicated to co-parenting, but this one especially, is that everything is kept in one location. There's no saying, I never got the email. Why didn't you tell me, um, oh, I forgot you never notified me, whatever the reason may be, um, it, it reduces the conflict because that doesn't happen. The other parent just knows I need to log into our family wizard. So I'm not going to get too deeply into this, but one thing I do want to show you, which um, uh, summer camp, which is very cool and you can do attachments here that's with the mem the um, the packages that you buy the amount of sort of space that you have um, and you can type a message so the cool thing that our family wizard has is called tone meter all right and so what it's going to do is essentially read your message and tell you how it reads I don't know about you but I am famous for sending emails sometimes that I read later and I was like, oh God, I wish I would have worded that better because email and text messages really, tone does not come across sometimes and what you might have meant playfully or slightly annoyed comes out really aggressively. So um, I'm just gonna type a message
Okay, so you'll see right here, um, don't forget upsetting, you're an idiot. So now why did I do this? Because, and again, I can only talk from my experience, but I have to say I have a lot of friends and friends of friends who are in co-parenting relationships, um, either through divorce or having a child without being married, and things get heated really quickly. And um, it's always about subtle things. And for the most part, it's subtle communication issues that are triggering the other parent. Um, and you're an idiot, obviously, is upsetting. But don't forget, you know, I wouldn't think about that necessarily um, as being upsetting. So let's see if we add a please in front of it. Please don't forget. Still upsetting. So uh, let's try. Uh, Okay, so it really helped us draft something that is as positive as possible. I mean, don't forget came up as being upsetting. And, you know, from the other parent's perspective, they could arguably, and I have heard this, uh, feel like they're being told what to do. And that just makes things unnecessarily tense. So that tension builds up and eventually there's more tension and then it just, it, it spirals really fast. So tone meter helped me kind of rein it in. I tend to be somewhat of a like get it done person. I like things scheduled. I like to know that I can count on people to do what they're supposed to do because I will do what I'm supposed to do. But if I'm communicating in a way that makes the other parent feel upset, I'm definitely less likely to get cooperation. So what I love about this software, and specifically this add-on in the messaging, um, is that it's training you, training me, to be aware of the little things that I might say that are upsetting. Because ultimately, you want to have your child be as comfortable with you guys as possible. And the only way for that to happen is for you guys to be somewhat comfortable with each other. It's never going to be lovey-dovey. I mean, maybe it will, but this takes the bullet out of that interaction. So I'm going to send it. Oh, hang on. Oh, other parent. Bam. Okay. And so now it shows up in my sent messages. All right. And it will tell me, again, it keeps a record. So if someone says, hey, I didn't know you had a football game, uh, you can say, well, it was in our family wizard and I see that you saw it. Maybe you forgot. Uh, I log in on Wednesdays and Sundays so that I'm always on track. Um, just a heads up, FYI. Okay. Let's move on to the expense log. Hands down, my favorite part of our family wizard. Why? Because let me show you how we used to track things. Yep. And this was me once a month sitting down to submit all my expenses. And then he would send me a check or give me cash or whatever. And then I have to go in and I have to notate that here big pain in the ass. I was never on time with this. And what would happen is we would be doing this for months, maybe a year. And this is a really long document at that point. So now imagine years of tracking these expenses. And suddenly he would say, well, I paid that. And now I have to do one of several things. I have to decide is the amount of money that I think I'm owed worth the hassle to go back 
through all of my expense and reimbursement tracking? Or is it just, you know, small enough that that annoyance isn't worth it and I'm just going to let it go? And so let me tell you, every year I will or would let go of about two to three hundred dollars because always at the end of the year, there's some sort of outstanding whatever. And he just says, I paid it. And so I if I'm going to actually make an issue out of it and fight about it or escalate it for me for two or three hundred dollars, I'm just going to let it go because I just don't want to sit for hours and have multiple communications and heated communications about two or three hundred dollars. Just forget it. I spent it on my kid. It's worth it to me. So this is how we were doing things. And this is how our family wizard does it. Love it. Again, it's color coded. So you'll see my color's pink, his color is green. It tracks the expenses by date, what they're called, the status, which we're going to talk about approved in a minute, the category, how much the total is, is up here, how much you owe the other parent, how much is still owed, and how much is paid or you've gotten already. And then it tallies it. So this will literally keep your shared expenses for years. Right here, this function alone pays for itself because I no longer have to send him any communications about what's outstanding. It's all in here. And if it gets to the point where it is significant and it's been outstanding for a really long time, the proof is right here if we need to discuss it officially or discuss it in front of a judge. All right. So first step is I would go in here. OK, and I would set up the categories that work for you guys. So I have after school program, general, medical, dental, other personal school tuition, summer camp. You know, maybe you have something that's like, um, maybe your child's big into hockey, your friends who are big into hockey. And that's a very expensive sport. Um, and let's say who's more supportive of hockey, that's more that your ex really loves it. So. Maybe you're only responsible for 20%. He's responsible for 80. OK, so set up the categories. And what you want to use, what I used, is our marital settlement agreement, which I really hope that you have a very specific one, because if it's not on paper, pretty much it doesn't count unless you want to go back and fight for it in front of a judge. So you should have, hopefully, a good marital settlement agreement that spells out all of your expenses and exactly how they're split. Then you come into the categories, you set all that up. All right, now we're going to add an expense. So this is an expense I need to pay the co-parent. I have not used this one yet. I'm going to request reimbursement for hockey new helmet. All right, purchase date, let's say I bought that the 2nd of May. Um, actually, let's put it that I bought it today. This is a hockey expense. <clears throat> I paid $120. You can browse and attach the receipt. OK, so I've got a sample receipt here. I wouldn't check private. Private's if you just want to keep it for you to see. I want my son's dad to see this, so I'm going to save it. And now you'll see that it shows up here. And what I love about this is you can sort this by date. So if you're owed something from 2017, 2016, I mean, really, it's here. <laughs> so you'll see here are these icons. And this is, um, there's three of them. You can edit that expense. You can delete that expense. Or you can mark it as reimbursed. So for example, sleepaway camp payment three of three, it's been approved, which I'm going to show you in a minute what that means. 
and I'm going to mark it as reimbursed. It's gonna ask me if I want to accept that because I can't undo it, yes. And now it just changes who owes what down here, all right? This is how much, when we're taking all of these expenses together, how much I would pay and he's supposed to pay, and this is how much we split, okay? Now, I have, with this account, set up the other parents so you can see the approved. So when I go to the expenses log here, you will see that the hockey new helmet, sort of by date, um, hockey new helmet is right down here. And you can also, you can put, put future, so if you know tuition payments for the whole year, you can just have them laid out ahead of time in advance. Um, so hockey new helmet, it's open. All the details that I entered are in there. And here we see refuse or approve, all right? So the only options that the other parent has, the non-paying parent, if they enter an expense here, they will have the same options we had, but the only options the parent who didn't pay has are that they can approve it or accept it, or refuse it, sorry. So if they refuse it, obviously now you're going to have to have some sort of further communication about it. Uh, you're going to need to evaluate how worth it is it for you to communicate about that issue further and either delete it or pursue, you know, going for it. But if they hit approved, then that just clears it. Now they have no other options. And so they know this is the ticking tally of what they owe. And I love it because, again, um, I was spending so much time that uh, doing this thing and then arguing over two or three hundred dollars. So you know, your child, however long you're divorced, however much you're not reimbursed, just builds up year after year. But for me, I try to settle it out and close it every year. Close what our shared expenses are, um, but easily I've let, I let go of 200 to 300 a year. And now I don't have to because it's all in here. And if he's approved it, it's all here. And once he pays it, you know, I'm gonna mark it as reimbursed. The other thing you, you should know is you can manage your payments through our family wizard. So the other parent can get, uh, can, open up in their uh, expense log, they can set it up so that they can pay through our family wizard. So then you don't even have to mark reimbursed. They're just going to, it's going to automatically do that if they pay through the system. So I really love our family wizard. I cannot, again, I cannot tell you how much time and energy it saves me because I have my 15 minutes on Wednesday, my 15 minutes on Sunday. Sometimes I don't even have that much. I just come in, tweak something for five minutes, and I'm done. I don't have to think about it anymore. So if you have any questions about the software, you can go up here. It says Contact Us uh, Resources. So they've got a great blog and a generalized sort of knowledge center. You can also download it for your iPhone or your Android. Here you'll see on the side. The other thing is help. Great sort of tips and tricks. You know, if you're confused about anything, you can see it here. I really hope that this has helped you guys um, and that you've gotten something out of this because as a co-parent, which is a stressful interaction, no matter how much you cut it, there's going to be times and disagreements and keeping business separate and out of it just reduces the aggravation. It just silos that. So you are free to be happier parents. So if you found this helpful, just go here. You're going to go to single mommy thing dot com forward slash our family wizard misspelled that our family wizard 
and that is an affiliate link I make a small commission if you buy through my link that does not at all change the cost to you um, it would be awesome if you use my link it helps me support the site but um, you're gonna be taken here to the home page and you pretty much know what to do uh, thanks so much uh, please comment questions concerns post them down below and check out single uh, mommy thing uh, dot com my site where I blog about all things single mom and divorced moms uh, tons of helpful tips and resources thanks again guys have a great one